Hello you guys. This guy plays this guy in the title Tuesday. You know this guy, but you don't know this guy. He is the GOAT! The GOAT! He is the national master from Pakistan, Momin Fezan. Okay, let's get back to the game. You are playing the top super grandmaster of the world who recently qualified for the candidates. He is 700 rating points higher than you. You have a white piece. You must show him the most dynamic opening in the world which you have the most hand in it. Your most solid approach, your most played repertoire. So here moment Fizan opens the game with A3. mother! Alright, let's analyze this beautiful game deeply. Now fundamentally we have thought that if opponent is playing in the flank always just grab the center. But unlike normal chess players super GMs has one thing which is a great understanding of a position. So here Frisja plays g6 now keep in mind. Here whites want to expand with b4 and b3 and Fiend shadow the bishop on b2. But with bishop to g7 this will make him hard. So Momin plays knight to f3, developing the knight and also covering the e5 and d5 square. Firuja plays bishop to g7 and now c4. So he doesn't want to allow d5 which will be a great for black. And now black plays d6. So this structure resembles the prince defense. But white hasn't taken the complete center so it's okay for black. Game continued with knight to c3, knight to f6, and d4. Momin could play e4 here but maybe he was worried about c5. And now Firuzja castles and white can grab the whole center with e4 but Momin prefers bishop to g5. Now keep in mind he doesn't play bishop to f4 because of the two moves knight to h5 and e5 in the near future so before developing the bishop always see which is the better square now black attacks the bishop with s6 it goes to h4 and now g5 and it goes to g3 now black can play knight to h5 but before that he plays bishop to f5 so stopping the annoying e4 now white continued the game with the most logical way. You want to attack on the flank but the problem is g4. So here moment plays e3, black continued with knight b to d7 and now bishop to d3. So both of them trades the bishop. Now Firuzja has multiple choices. He can attack the center with c5, he can play knight to h5 attacking the bishop but he chooses rook to e8. So e5 is incoming, white castles and black plays e5. d takes e5, d takes e5 and now black has a threat of playing e4 forking the queen and the knight. So here you don't want to play e4 yourself because you will allow the outpost to d4. So here white plays queen to c2. In this position engine prefers rook to c8 or go queen to e7 to play rook to d8. But here Firuzja plays a positional mistake which is e4. Now e4 seems like okay you're attacking the knight. If knight goes to d4 you can attack it with c5. But the problem is after knight to d4 playing c5 will allow knight to b5. And with bishop and knight attacking the square this will be become very hard to defend. So here Furja plays knight to c5 and white plays rook a to d1. Now keep in mind you can't play knight to d3 here because of a simple move knight takes e4. Now there is a discovery of a knight and plus your queen is defending the c7 pawn so only logical move in this position is to play queen to c8. And now Momin has a completely dominating position. All he has to do is play knight to b5 and black has to play knight to a6 or rook to e7 but it will become very passive. But here Momin plays f3. Now f3 is not a bad move but the problem with f3 is that now his e3 pawn is very weak. Firuzja continued the game with b6 which allows queen to b7 and plus his b6 defends the knight. And now this position is plus 2.2 white is dominating this position but he completely threw his advantage with a one particular move which is f takes e4. 
Now this F takes E4 allows both of the knight to jump in the center. Instead of F takes E4, if we had played B4, he will have a dominating position. But with F takes E4, he just threw his advantage. Game continued with knight takes e4, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, and knight to f5. And now Perugia plays a tricky move, queen to e6, offering the c7 pawn. Now, if you grab the c7 pawn, the problem is rook to c8, and black will have an open position. So that's why movement plays the strongest move recommended by an engine, rook to d5. Now seems like rook to d5 allows c6 which Firuzja plays but you will not move the rook here. First you will play knight takes bishop and after king takes you will play rook to f5. Now look rook to d5 to f5 now this is stack and attacking the f7 pawn. So here Firuzja plays f6 but this f6 move allows a very good trick to get back in the game white can get back in the game with the one particular move can you guys see it that move is bishop to e5 now with bishop to e5 if you take with the pawn the knight is going to get hanged and plus now rook are infiltrating and if you move the knight this f7 will fall but due to the blitz game moment missed it and he played bishop to e1 now position looks even but white has one problem which is this e3 pawn. So game continued with rook a to d8, bishop to c3, knight takes c3 and queen takes c3. Now if you grab this e3 pawn you will lose this f6 pawn. So now he plays rook to d6 so defending this and now he's threatening to win this e3 pawn with a check. So moment just pushes it with e4 so if you grab it he will take this f6 pawn. So here Firuzja plays rook to e7. And now game continued with h3 and Firuzja saw that c5 will be incoming so he plays c5 himself. And now rook to d5 so offering the rook exchange which Firuzja accepts. And now a move queen to e3 check and now we are in the rook endgame. So in this endgame we have 4 versus 3 on the queen side and we have 3 versus 2 on the king side but this position looks very rush. Maybe white has a bit of an advantage because of this d5 pawn but it is very dry. So game continued with rook to f3 you can't take this because of this d5 pawn will go. So rook to e4 by black attacking the c4 pawn and now rook to c3. Now Firuzja plays rook to d4 so not allowing rook to d3 in the near future and white plays b3 and black plays f5. Game continued with king to f2, king to f6, king to f3 and f4. Seems like black is infiltrating but this d5 pawn can be very tricky. So game continued with g3, king e5, g takes f4, g takes f4 and now a losing move in this position, king to g4. Instead of king to g4, if he had played king to e2, he could prolong the game more. But with king to g4, the problem is two things. First move is rook to d2 and now he is just coming down. So here moment just played king to h5 to grab this s6 pawn and it is just too late. King to e4, king to x is f3. And now rook to c1 but it's just too late, rook to h2, rook e1 check, king d3, d6, f2, rook f1, king e2, rook c1, rook takes h3 with a check, king g5 and after rook to d3 moment just resigns the game because now this d6 pawn is falling and this is just queening. So this game is actually pretty good for moment Pezan because this end game was drawn and you have a factor called oh my god I'm drawing this game against this GM the super GM so that this oh my god factor could lead you to losing position but still he played a very good game and we are proud of him so if you like the video do like and subscribe to the channel and see you all in the next video